There's no way to introduce this next story other than to just show the picture. Yeah, Fox News has legitimately run an article about the president not wearing a tie during his interview with Bill O'Reilly. Barack Obama, alleged president of the United States, doesn't feel that his office calls for him to wear a tie. You know who else didn't wear a tie? Joseph Stalin. Reagan wore a tie. Why doesn't Obama? I am becoming increasingly convinced that the mission statement of Fox News is to become so ridiculous and insipid that they are immune from being satirized. It's either that, or they're run by a cabal of space aliens who are trying to acclimate us to stupidity and send us schlepping towards Mike Judge's idiocracy. I mean, come the fuck on! No tie? What's next? The president wore socks under his sandals! Stop the fucking presses! Oh, Obama wears white after Labor Day! Oh, back Obama, you foul demon! Do Americans really go into conniptions if their politicians aren't dressed in this frankly archaic style? I mean, there's only two restaurants in all of New York City that still require a tie and jacket. You know, you look back at a movie in the 1930s, everyone's walking around dressed in a tie and a suit. You don't see that on the street anymore. Let our politicians dress like normal people. The Patriot Act is up for renewal this month, and they're only going to allot 40 minutes to debate its merits. That's about the length of an episode of Battlestar Galactica without commercial breaks. Now, Ron Paul has spoken out against this, and so has his son Rand Paul, but the general response of the Tea Party has been pretty much... So let's review. The Tea Party claims to be against big government, to be against federal power, to be against government interference, and yet, the political will of the Tea Party to oppose the renewal of one of the biggest expansions of federal power ever passed is so listless that it hardly warrants mentioning. So once again, we have to ask ourselves, why did this movement sit idly by while Bush ran up massive debt and greatly expanded federal power? We have to ask ourselves once again why the Tea Party so vehemently opposes Obama policies that are really just continuations of George W. Bush policies. Why does the Tea Party so traduce our current Commander-in-Chief with such unmitigated maliciousness when they were so reticent under his predecessor? What is the difference between these two men? Their political differences are trifling. They've both kept our secret prisons open. They've both continued wars on two fronts. They've both run up massive deficits. So what's the difference? Hmm... Quite a mystery. The question could, in all fairness, be reversed. Why? Have the liberals, who once vehemently castigated Bush, silenced their trenchant criticisms, despite the fact that Obama carries the torch of many Bush policies? Bradley Manning, a U.S. citizen, is being held in a military prison right now. He has not been charged. He has not been tried. This didn't happen under Bush. This is happening under Obama. A seven-year-old boy in New Jersey brought a toy Nerf gun to school and is now facing criminal misdemeanor charges. The school said that they have a zero-tolerance policy for imitation firearms. Well, you know what? I have a zero-tolerance policy for stupid bullshit. First of all, a seven-year-old has no inkling of the irrational terror that is caused in America by fake handguns. I mean, I'm 26 and I don't understand it. 
I mean, this is a pro-gun country! We love guns, we love shooting, we love violence, and bang, bang, kill you, you're dead! My cold, dead hands, Second Amendment! And yet, we always make this big hullabaloo about fake guns! Let me explain the difference between a Nerf gun and a real gun to Hamilton Early Childhood Education Center. A Nerf gun shoots low-velocity, foam projectiles that are completely harmless. A real gun shoots high-velocity metal projectiles that can fucking kill you! I mean, what's next? Is this school gonna call animal control on a teddy bear? I... You're fucking ridiculous, America. I don't know what to tell you. You're fucking absurd. Bristol Palin is writing a memoir. I'll let that sink in for a moment. Bristol Palin is writing a memoir? What's it gonna be? A fucking pamphlet? Who's get, who's the target audience? Monkeys? <laughs> Aside from dancing on TV and coming out of Sarah Palin's vagina, what has she done? What 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 has she done? Seriously, what has she done? Just answer that question. And you know she won't be writing it herself. I feel so bad for the guy that ends up having to ghostwrite this piece of shit. And then I danced on TV! Alright, then what happened? Then what happened? What do you mean? <sighs> I'm a bit late on this one, but Christina Aguilera sang the wrong lyrics to the national anthem at the Super Bowl. And, um, between you and me, she wasn't wearing a tie. She created a whole new line for the song. What so proudly we watched at the twilight's last reaming. I like reaming Twilight, don't you guys? Better than watching Twilight, anyway. Even Weird Al got in a dig at her. By the way, Christina Aguilera, nice job at the Super Bowl, but changing the words to songs is my gig. Sick burn. I don't particularly care about this story, but what I do care about is this poll that was done by the Washington Post, by no means a scientific poll, that said that 67% of their readers said that what Christina Aguilera did was unforgivable. Un. Forgivable. My question is, what does unforgivable mean in this instance? Is this like, I'm never buying a Christina Aguilera album ever again? I mean, so what? No one's bought a Christina Aguilera album in like six years anyway. I guess we were preemptively not forgiving her. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace. The fuck. Out. And if you really enjoyed this, please favorite it. It helps out quite a bit.